You're selecting options. You get to the magical hidden settings, other settings box. Um, so if you go to and see if I can do this, if I can do this on the fly. I don't know. See if I can find it. Anyone who wants to help me, just let me know. Somewhere in stream, maybe. Yeah. Strings. Strings. Menu. Bar. bar. Okay. So here's your here's your menus. So let's see, image is going to be here. And there's my zoom in, zoom out things. Right. So crop on this Right, so crop. So crop is you, if you look at crop, you see it's got a comma and a capital A plus capital C. Right? So if you wanted to, you could create a shortcut for zoom in, which was you know, comma, capital A. Z or something like that, and uh, and that would when you save it, it would create a shortcut which is Alt Z for zooming in. Does that make sense? Can I show it? Okay, let's see if I can. There might be an Alt-Z already somewhere. If there's an Alt-Z already, then it's not good. Is there an Alt-Z already? Okay. You have to use one that it doesn't exist already. And unfortunately, it won't tell you. It's, I was trying, I was thinking Z would be one of them. How about... Um, oh, how about... Can you use control? Yep. Control plus and control minus, right? <laughs> you can see when you look at the other strings. So if you look in the file menu, um, the control ones don't have any modifier. So, you know, like new is control N, so there's just an N. Two dimensional spins. You mean to have a 2D preview? Yeah. Yes. So, so I will I will tell you since we're all friends here that um, we have done um, a lot of investigating of uh, 2D sensors for photo finish cameras, and um, our con 
concern up to this point is basically around what I was saying yesterday about image quality. It's very difficult to get a cut image which is of the quality that we think is you know, good enough for a finish length product um, out of 2D sensors. One of the reasons is that they have such tiny pixels. Um, and so we have some ideas around this and we are looking at, at some other new sensors as well. But basically it's, it, I, I think that certainly um, in the future there will be um, cameras in the line and they won't be exclusive. We won't only make 2D sensor cameras, I don't think, uh, anytime soon because the, again, the quality of the sensors is just not sufficient. But um, there will be a finishing camera which is based on 2D sensor and which will allow you to It's a it's it's a it's a touchy thing. How would we how would we go about? And I'm asking, you know, certainly people who've dealt with um, uh, governing bodies is, is even more than I have. I mean, how do we go about doing something like that? Which I think is a perfectly valid thing to do. This is the question: is is there some way? If you, can you uh, can you essentially convert a manually started race into a uh, you know to get it to read in hundreds of a second? Is there some way to do that and maintain the statutory requirements to make it clear that uh, a race was manually started and you know there's nothing you can do at the end of the day what I always say is there's nothing you can do to stop someone from being evil if their goal is to be evil right? but what you don't want to do is you don't want to put someone in a situation where they're accidentally being evil uh, right? you don't want to you don't want to put someone in a situation where they're accidentally making it appear like a race was automatically started when it wasn't um, so if anybody has any ideas, you're welcome to talk to me afterwards about how we can do something like that um, in a way that doesn't um, that doesn't cause problems for for everyone else. But I'll write it down anyway. Okay, great. Dennis. So this is this active area thing that you're talking about. Yeah. So you just you would like to see where the active area falls on in the in like the hardware control window or something like that. That way, if someone sets it, forgets to change it next week, there's a big friend who can look at it. Might miss that week. Right. So there's no red bars in there. 
see, you get people like Dennis who actually use these features. <laughs> I, uh, personally, I've never even used this feature before, so this is quite fascinating. It's nice to know that somebody is using the feature. Take one more. Giles is giving me the move it along sign. Yes. The hook. Yes. Okay. So, um, what I think would be great is if uh, I have multiple cameras on the same subnet. Within links, I can select if I had two computers, which camera I want to talk to. Yes. This is a. Does anyone else have this? Because this is something that we've heard about before as well, where basically more than one camera on a single network but you want to actually be able to tell the software which camera you want to talk to, right? as opposed to have the, the software basically tell you which camera to talk to. <laughs> um, so, I'm sure that's on the list somewhere. Okay. I'll take the manual. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> 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 well, <on that> note, <laughs> I will add, update the website. Um, yeah. We're working on it. Um, Thank you, and, and feel free, I should say, that feel free to just come over to me individually and give me ideas on things you want as well. So.